before we start a little bit background about me, I'm a search user, developer, and researcher. Um, I've been working quite a few years with search technologies, and I got a PhD in information retrieval as well to the agenda. So, how many of you already struggled with uh, two slow queries? Okay, um, motivation parallels it seems. Why would you want to have uh, uh, fast queries? Well, you're probably all working on some software or some service for users. Users uh, expect nowadays instantaneous results. Um, that probably means something around 200 milliseconds. But of course, we have, you have to have to do the search. You have to render some some result pages or whatever. So in the search packet, you will usually have even much less time than that. Um, well, if we can. If we can speed up queries, then of course you can use the time that you gain for executing other queries. So it's actually good for, for also handling more load. Um, and and of course we are having we have a search which is mainly read only, so we can always just scale out and throw in more meshes onto the problem. But of course then it just becomes a cost problem. So you don't want to double the number of meshes just because uh, you have a few queries that you want to speed up and. There's also a significant uh, development cost if you, if you, if you usually uh, one mesh might maybe might be enough, but you will have to upgrade to, to some uh, distributed system or so. So it's it's good if you can keep it uh, small and simple. If you're talking about query latencies, one very useful device to communicate and also to to, to see what what you're doing is uh, if you if you draw um, query latency. So what I did here is just you go on the production logs and you either for a day or a week or a sample of that you just um, extract the query runtimes and you just sort them and and you put on the y axis you have time and you just put all the queries on the, on the x axis and then you can make this nice graph that already looks quite healthy in this case. I, I draw, I draw uh, uh, the mean here. Um, well, lots of people are using means. Uh, you shouldn't me uh, use them because um, this is not a bell-shaped curve, so uh, using the mean is actually quite meaningless. Um, much more interesting uh, are those percentiles. So at what, what y value are we for, for instance, 95% of your queries, because that has a really good interpretation, uh, direct interpretation that tells you, well, in this case, 95% um, of your queries are uh, around 180 milliseconds or faster, or the other way around, uh, there are 5% five, 5 of your queries that are actually slower than 180 milliseconds. Uh, it's good to draw that first, so if you uh, follow some test-driven development. Of course, you write first the tests, and then just to see that once you do a change, what impact does it actually have? Only if you do that, you can actually learn out of what your changes um, lead to. So, if you are um, um, either you are interested in having even less queries faster, or those 180 milliseconds are not enough for you. So you might want to zoom into those very slow queries and try to figure out um, why they're slow. Um, so what, what we can do about it. Um, well, first, of course, you should do your homework. Um, there's lots of advice uh, online, um, for instance, also on this, this link that I give here down here. It's a bit outdated, but, but it really captures the, the, the most essential things. Um, Disk is, is if, if you're having uh, your indexes on disk and disk plays a role, um, so you can't, you didn't use uh, the operating system to, to buffer lots of, lots of parts of your uh, index, uh, of course that will slow down a lot of things. Especially if you have concurrent queries, um, um, you might get uh, really slow queries uh, just because of that. So we can reduce a little bit uh, the pressure, the usage of the hard disk. Um, you can throw the indexing, you can put in the indexing onto different machines, or you're using SSDs, or um, of course you shouldn't um, run production queries uh, before you didn't warm your, your indexes. But of course, ideally, um, your whole index would fit into memory, and then you're not having most of those issues, you even wouldn't have to warm it. Um, so. Have a read on that on that link for some more more advice. So if that didn't didn't help and disk is not your problem and you fit everything into memory eventually um, and still some queries are slow, then then what you what you should do is um, well dig into those slow queries and understand what is the actual problem. Um, 
so there are two 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 things that can happen. Um, so you're seeing some some slow queries in in production, and then you try to actually reproduce it, and in, either they turn out to be not slow. In that case, it's probably some 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 things happening outside of, of the query processing, something going on in that machine there um, that slows the things down. So to find those things, um, just lock everything that you can imagine that could have an influence, and then try to find uh, correlations by time um, uh, of, of of parallel things that might have happened. So so usual candidates are that you are indexing uh, uh, very many documents at that moment, or there are some other demons on, on that mesh and that, that influence and influence um, um, query processing, take away CPU or, or uh, does a lot of activity on disk. Uh, garbage collection might be an issue um, or, or paging of the operating system or so. So once you rule out all of those issues, um, you should actually be able to reproduce uh, those runtimes. And what you can do then is you can actually profile your code what you want to look first at is, is your own code that you added on top of Lucene, because you, Lucene is usually pretty fast, so it's very likely that uh, actually you're using it in a way that is not as efficient. So first, profile your code, um, and even if you if you profile as well the, the Lucene code, uh, please don't instrument all small details inside of the query processing of Lucene, because what you see then is um, that Lucene might be hugely much slower than than uh, you see without that instrumentation because uh, optimizations of the, of the uh, virtual machine of the hotspot compiler so that just don't work. So once you came up with some correlation with something, um, what do you do? Well, you think you understood the problem and then you probably also can come up with some, some potential solutions. Um, what do you do with that solution? Well, just implement it, just try it out, and see what it does to your, to your query latency graph. Um, maybe that fixes it. But of course, you only want to do that if it's actually quite cheap to do that. You don't want to exchange all your all your mesh and parks or park or upgrade it to more memory and then figure out it's still too slow. So um, to 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 give some confidence in what you're doing here, you can just try to, to do some uh, cheap uh, and fast experiments to, that give you a bit more confidence that uh, you are, what you think is a solution is actually a solution. And of course, it's very good to communicate as well to others um, regarding a return on investment. So one example, if you think that, that um, disk is a problem, but you're having an index that at, at the moment doesn't fit into memory on your machines, well, that you, then you would want to buy more, uh, different machines, more memory, and that's expensive. So to figure out if that solves your problem, what you can do is just, just execute your queries multiple times uh, consecutively, one after another, and then measure the, the time that it takes in the second or third step. Um, what you measure there is, um, of course, some, some kind of lower bound, some optimal. Um, uh, everything is in, in, in memory. As, as long as um, the sum of the, 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 the postings that are actually affected by your query still fit into memory. So you're having a much lower memory requirement and you can kind of simulate uh, the optimal, in an optimal case uh, what would happen if you have your whole index in memory. Um, and if that's still not enough and doesn't uh, fit your requirement, of course, uh, only buying uh, bigger machines or memory doesn't really solve your problem. So you might just right away look at some something else. Um, yeah. So if you did all of that, um, what what you run into usually is that that query processing becomes an issue. So to to understand why query processing can be slow. Um, I want to I want to show you how query processing is at the moment implemented in Lucene. Um, the two two most basic kinds of, of queries are conjunctions and disjunctions. So conjunctions um, uh, work like this. Um, assume a query like the Lucene Resolu Revolution Conference. Um, you already heard yesterday um, how an index works. Is you having this 
this vocabulary, this dictionary on the left with all your terms, and then you have pointers to the posting lists, to the inverted lists that, that um, contain the document IDs, um, and each, each of these postings tell you that where this uh, term is in that particular document, and this document IDs are sorted in uh, ascending order um, and are of some lengths. So the length is referred to as this so-called document frequencies, FT, and they're usually also just already standing in the vocabulary so that you know how long those lists are. Um, so for conjunctions, the, the whole thing works like this. Uh, first, you, you, you sort the clauses by increasing document frequency to figure out what is the, 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 the list that is shortest, so the most sparse list. Um, and then you try to, to just um, um, check in the other lists that this document actually occurs in all of them, because only for conjunctions, only, only documents are hit that, for which all of the query terms um, occur in, document, in the document. Um, so that works like this. The most sparse posting list that we also call the lead, um, you, you look at, the, at, at each individual um, entry. So the, the document 18 is a potential candidate, and then you just try to find this 18 in the, in the, in the next sparse syst, uh, posting list. Um, in this case, that fails. Um, just as a background, here this advance is implemented using using skip lists, which is very efficient. So in logarithmic time, you can jump anywhere into this uh, into this posting list. So in this case, we didn't find it, and instead of just trying the next um, document in the in the in this in the lead, uh, we actually advancing there as well. So now we're at 31, and then we try to advance the other ones to 31, and in this case that actually works, so we found uh, a result. We advance the lead again, and we are at the end there, so that's 31 is the only result. So that went pretty quickly. Um, quite differently, it looks for disjunctions where it's uh, already enough if, if a document matches at least one uh, query term. So here what we have, we're having just a point in all of those lists, and then we call um, and then we have a, have a min heap, uh, so a heap data structure that always uh, keeps track of the, of the smallest doc ID, um, of the clause with the smallest doc ID. And in this case, we, we see that um, um, the document two exists only in the document two exists only one query term, and that one you would advance, and you see that the four exists in two. So in the end, you're just merging those inverted lists using uh, uh, this heap data structure. And you already see how that goes. You, uh, you, you're nexting and nexting and nexting. It takes a long time until you <coughs> finally advance all of them behind the posting list, and you came up with this uh, huge result set where most of them only contain one query term, namely this, this very frequent term, the. And of course, in the next step, you would score those and first return the ones. Uh, uh, that matched more query, more uh, interesting query terms. So query processing is slow if you are if uh, because um, this disjunctive processing has a computational complexity of um, log c. So c is uh, is the number of clauses um, times the the, uh, the number of documents that you actually have to match, and if you're having uh, lots of query terms, so you're very likely that there's one of those very frequent terms in there, so n is usually very close to the size of your collection. So even if, if query terms uh, from the user are not uh, uh, that many, uh, if you use something like query expansion, that easily can become a significant cost. Um, and then disjunctive processing slow because we didn't use this, this uh, function in advance at all. Um, Another reason that I, would, uh, that I want to mention before we talk about how to improve this um, is fil our filters. Um, filters, are, don't get me wrong, filters are great, but I saw a lot of instances that people have been overusing them. Um, so what filters do is they actually pre-compute some, some uh, common sub-query uh, that, that you might have in your, in your overall query, and then they cache the, 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 the results so that it's already available the next time that you need it. Um, 
And why people uh, also very often use filters is because uh, conceptually they are not influencing um, the scoring, which is nice to have, but in fact you can have the same if you use the so-called constant score query and just add this filter criterion that you might have um, as an additional conjunct to the query. Um, the problem with filters is, well, they incur an additional cost for the first time you execute that query. So you really want to make sure that, that you use only filters for things that uh, actually reoccur. Otherwise, um, queries that might be actually quite fast, you slow them down because you're building up those filters. Um, a minor issue uh, that I think is still currently, um, as far as I know, it's, it's, at the moment, uh, filters are still just bit sets, and for those bit sets, there's no skip information. So, so what we saw before with the conjunctions, if you have a conjunction with a filter in, uh, inside, so you're not having this, this kind of leapfrog behavior that you're advancing one and the other. Um, so in case you have a very sparse filter, in that case, um, adding it as an additional conjunct to the query could be actually still faster. Okay, some general advice what you can do against um, slow disjunctive queries. Uh, well, they're slow because you're, you're having this few very common terms in there and for, for each of those entries in this, uh, what you could also call stop words, uh, you're having to, to uh, reshuffle this, this, this heap data structure. Um, so one common advice that, that has been around for, I think, more than 30 years have been just remove them, right? If you don't have them in the query, then you don't have an issue. Um, and it actually saves you a bit of uh, space in the index, but nowadays with, with uh, the index compression that we're having, it's actually quite quite small amounts that you're saving there. Um, I think, I believe it's, it's uh, roughly uh, even below 10% uh, that all the stop words take in, in an index. And if you also index the positions, it might, might go up a little bit further. Um, but the big limitation that, you, that you're getting then is um, some queries you actually can't execute anymore, for instance. This one down here only contains what you could consider all of those terms as stop words, so there's nothing left that you could use for, for matching documents as well as for scoring. So in general, um, don't do that. Um, some, some more advice that, that has a minor impact, but if you're just about improving a bit, uh, because it's very easy to implement, then you, you, can, you should have a look at them. Um, one thing is that you could um, please, please look in your index if you are um, having if you're using uh, term frequencies differently from one. So if you index documents and most of them are one, you might um, consider uh, using this option here to only index the documents. Because what's happening is in, in those postings, in those inverted lists, there's not only this document ID, but uh, in lines there's also this term frequency. So if you just throw them out, then you're getting binary, uh, uh, shorter, short inverted lists that have to go from this to memory, from memory to the processor, so you can gain a bit of that. Or you're using a blog postings format, which anyway became the default um, in the scene for that one, um, that, that can also provide a, a bit of a speed up. Or you're going and, and trying to find different implementations to, to the defaults that, is, that are chosen in the scene. Uh, many are, are a little bit putting a little bit more emphasis on, on saving memory. Um, but if you're using the different trade off, uh, you might actually speed up a few things. Um, and last but not least, um, if you already throw out term frequencies, um, so they, um, they actually become all one then, they're still used inside of the default uh, scoring formula. Uh, so e for each of those documents, you're still multiplying with one, which takes time. And um, usually the, 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 uh, all the uh, scoring formulations, they are having um, uh, uh, a part of the formula refers to uh, using term frequencies so, and Part of it uses uh, document frequency as well as the document length. But all of your documents have similar lengths, and it doesn't actually help you dis to discriminate between um, matches. Then just throw out that part of the uh, that part out of the scoring function. <coughs> okay. So that's that's not much that you could do so far about it. Um, now, getting to the interesting part, 
um, recent developments within your scene that can help you. Uh, first, I want to talk about um, what is called min should match. So min should match is an additional constraint that you can set on Boolean queries where you enforce that it's actually not enough that only one clause matches in a document. So um, if you're setting this min should match, or which is also called mm in solar, um, to something larger than one, for instance two, um, you enforce that at least two, two uh, uh, clauses have to match in a document. And, and if, you, if you think about the query, um, this is actually the query that is, has been used in, in, um, in, within this ticket to develop this. Um, it has terms randomly chosen from, from uh, Wikipedia. Um, so there's one very frequent one, and the other ones are, are not, not so frequent. Um, it's an interesting coincidence, though, that by chance it has been chosen Dublin here. Um, what the key insight here is, if you are enforcing that, that two terms have to match, then why we are doing disjunction over all of the terms? It's actually enough to, to, dis, to do disjunctive processing uh, over um, yeah, one less uh, clause. So you can hold out one clause, and um, just for efficiency, you, you would typically choose the, the, the most dense, the, the, the most frequent term here. And you just do this dis costly disjunctive processing over the other ones. And then you, you're just advancing within this posting list to, to uh, look up uh, all the additional information if, if also this term occurs in the document. So min should match already exists for a long time in the scene. But so far, uh, it hasn't been implemented like this. Um, so far, it was just a post filter. So, so we just uh, did disjunction over all of the query terms. And then afterwards, we checked in how many does it occur and then threw out those matches. Um, and that explains this behavior that you see here. So on the x-axis, we're having for this query uh, that has five uh, query terms. You're seeing what, should, what happens if you, if you choose a min short match of one, two, three, four, five. If you choose min short match one, then what you get is purely disjunctions. If you choose I mentioned match five, you enforce that all of the query terms have to occur. So then you're getting a conjunction. And um, in, in Lucene, there's a, there's a conjunctive scorer, there's a disjunctive scorer, and there's a, now this, uh, this uh, implementation for min should match. Uh, conjunctions are very fast, orders of magnitude faster, the disjunctions are pretty slow. And if you always use this implementation for min should match, that additionally checks if, if you actually satisfy this requirement. Um, you're getting uh, even a bit slower here, but independent of the of the of the constraints that you're giving, uh, you're getting the same same speed. You get a bit of a speed up because candidates are very early thrown out, but you don't gain anything for larger min should match. Um, from Lucene four dot three, um, it actually looks like this. So you're getting some intermediate behavior. If you're having an, uh, putting a, a higher constraint onto it, you're getting uh, huge speed ups. Um, so in this case, for this query, we're only having one uh, stop word in there, so one very frequent term. So here you already see that if you choose a min shot match that is just one uh, uh, beyond the number of uh, uh, frequent terms, in this case two, you're getting most of the speed up already. And having only one out of five uh, frequent terms is, is probably the more usual case, the more frequent case that happens in practice. Uh, but of course, we could just replace more and more of the query terms with more frequent ones to see what's happening. Uh, so, and, and name those uh, queries, um, like uh, how many of those terms um, are frequent, one, two, three, four, five, or five. And the results look a bit like this. So on the left-hand side, um, that's the same graph that we already saw. So generally, you see if you're having more frequent terms, the whole query processing becomes slower. And you also see this effect that um, as soon as you have a min shot match that's just one beyond uh, the number of documents, uh, you're getting this huge speed up.
Okay, so the open questions that are still with min should match are that you actually have to answer is how bad is it that you enforce this constraint that it has to match two, two terms? Um, you also screen out in this case all the, the documents that only match on one, but maybe a very important one. Um, and or, or you can turn it the other way around. Um, is it actually enough to match any min should match terms? So you can enforce two, but if there are two very frequent terms in it, you're getting also all those matches that just match on this two, two stop words. So ideally, what you would want to have is some kind of scorer that you provide with a, with a list of stop words, and, and he, he just screens out Zeus and just dis, does disjunct processing on the, on the remaining part. Um, you can implement that, but you have to be a bit careful with Zeus queries that you also don't throw out all of the terms. One way of implementing that is, is to use this uh, so-called required optional uh, scorer. Uh, what it does is, it already exists quite a long time in, in the scene, what it does is it actually does conjunctive processing on required parts of, the, of, uh, of a Boolean query. So if you specify a Boolean query and some of the, con uh, so some of the clauses are conjunct and some of them are disjunct, so and you enforce uh, the presence of some and uh, uh, of some that's not, um, this scorer is, is in fact involved and used for, for, for executing them. So it does conjunctive processing on the required clauses and then on the course advance on the optional ones. Um, the question here is, yeah, well, how do you, if you, if you specify your query, how do you choose which of your terms have, uh, should, should um, be required and which are optional? One way of doing it is I will have this, this kind of stop word list. The other one is just look at the term statistic. <coughs> So if you look up the, the, the statistic, how often this, this term occurs, um, then you can make this decision and based on the document frequency, you can decide if this is a stop word or not. Um, and in fact, if you hand over this statistics that you looked up to, to the query, then um, once you execute that query, this query doesn't look up all those terms again. So that makes it easier to implement that, but in fact, um, Implementing that uh, uh, has been already done and it's available since Lucene 4.1 in, in um, what is so-called uh, common terms query. So this is a query that you just can take. Uh, Simon Wilner implemented it um, and adds some query terms and it just exactly does what it just described. It looks up these <coughs> query terms um, and also this pointers in all, all the information that is in the dictionary. Uh, categorizes the query terms for uh, low frequent or high frequent one and builds up this query that uses this required optional sum score. And then it, before it executes the query, it actually hands over those, those uh, statistics to the term queries uh, so that they don't have to look up this information again. And in addition, it also supports match should match. So the best uh, uh, choice in in just trying it out, what, what it does to your queries is, is using this query. So, so far we only talked about terms as clauses. So what happens if you are having uh, subqueries? So, for instance, you're having a, a conjunction on a higher level and then as one clause is a disjunct. Um, well, so far Lucene has been using some not so reliable heuristic to figure out which of the clauses uh, actually is more, um, has more candidates. Um, but from uh, the theme for three that has been exchanged against the cost model that, that um, actually tries to figure out out of the um, document frequencies of the subquery, um, what is the worst case estimate of candidates that you could get out of a query. Uh, and the worst case estimate for this junction is just to take the sum. So if all the document IDs in um, terms are disjoint, then, then you could end up with at most uh, the sum of the document frequency of all clauses. And for conjunctions, junctions, it's a minimum. And what this does is that it gives you some guarantees that you don't end up with queries that, that just because of a wrong choice of the order, what, what uh, clauses are held out and which ones are advanced, over which are the disjunctions, um, it doesn't happen anymore that queries that could be very fast are, are slow just because of a wrong choice. 
Um, so using the, this worst case estimate is a start, but in, in, the, in fact, uh, we could probably do a bit better there because at the moment, just doing this, we are, we are ignoring the effort that it actually takes to, to build up this query. So there's no distinction between a subquery that has many terms and you're having to come up with a, with a disjunction or conjunction versus a term where you're having all the information already read. So if they have the same document frequency or the one has a, a bit a smaller one, you could actually still choose you should maybe still choose the one that is more costly to build, even though um, it, it gives you less candidates. And um, there's only one cost, so there's no distinction between um, yeah, using the one or the other method. And it's a bit of an open question uh, if, uh, if and how much we could do better with a more detailed cost model. So one of my favorites um, is um, another contribution that I uh, presented on, on Berlin Buzzwords last year. Um, um, I did an implementation of the so-called max score algorithm um, that has been presented um, almost two decades ago, actually. Um, so I don't want to explain the details, but what it does, it, it actually um, sorts the, the terms by increasing uh, document frequency. And you see here, illustrated by the, by the size of the boxes, how much influence that term has on the score. And if you're only interested in the top 10 or top 100 documents from those that have the highest score, you can, at some point during query processing, if you have already K um, candidates, you can use um, the score of the lowest um, scoring candidate to come up with a decision at some point that uh, you don't have to look at those, uh, those candidates anymore that only contain those very frequent terms. So um, during query processing, you are having a dy dynamic process where you are excluding more and more terms out of uh, this disjunctive processing that is so slow. So the current state of this implementation, is, it's attached to this uh, ticket and it has a lot of no commits and that is because the, the biggest limitation of it is that uh, uh, you have to run actually over your whole index to come up with stati some statistics uh, that, are, that are necessary here. So it's uh, probably only a, a good solution if you have static indexes. Um, static means um, that you only want to refresh them in some time frame that is larger than it takes to run uh, and rewrite your whole index which is maybe around uh, one or a few hours. So another uh, very good um, contribution was um, the one that uh, Adrian did. Index sorting, um, he already talked in, in yesterday's talk uh, about it in detail, so I just want to mention it here. Um, what it does here is that um, you have now a way to, to specify the sort criterion by, uh, by by which the documents are sorted inside of your posting lists. Uh, that's not only good for, for compression, um, because you can use the sort order that, that puts things that, uh, that are similar next to each other, so compression should work better, uh, but it also uh, allows you to early terminate. So during processing, you could at some point, uh, you could already stop, and, and that should speed things up. Yeah, so, so that much to, to uh, suggestions that um, can reduce the cost um, that is in, 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 in of, inside of the query processing. Um, if you are um, out of ideas what to do, of course, you can always just use parallelization. Um, if you already have multiple meshes that just because you, you, if you already have a distributed system, um, because you're having a lot of load, you can just add some more meshes and then distribute the query processing to it to uh, multiple meshes. Um, but in cases, as there are also cases where you your whole index might fit on, on onto one machine. You don't get so many queries, so that you can um, could could think about using multi-threading uh, for each query. Um, that works actually pretty pretty well <laughs> if you're having static indexes and you're you're distributing your 
um, your documents uniformly by some hash or, by, or randomly uh, over the different uh, shards or even segments, then you're getting almost perfect speedups. Um, for dynamic indexes, you don't get perfect speedups, but there are a lot of suggestions mentioned in those two tickets. So if you're interested in that, feel free to, to add patches. So in summary, I think it's, it's firstly very important to understand your problem because only, only if you understand it, you can come up with solutions that actually solve your problem. Um, if you have many million documents, um, in fact, scoring can become the main problem, and then you have to look into, into some of the things that I talk to, to, uh, told you about now. Um, there have been many recent efficiency improvements. Um, I told you in, at which uh, Lucene versions they are available. Uh, the slides will be available later on, and they are all, all linked in there. Um, and as always, patches are welcome for, for more uh, suggestions, contributions. Um, Finally, allow me to, to say that uh, we're hiring it here. If you're interested in not only the efficiency side of things, but, but also the result quality and, and uh, data mining, machine learning, um, we're hiring. We're having offices in Frankfurt, Berlin, Boston, and Chicago. So please get in touch. You mentioned at the very end there about the um, uh, interesting query strategy that you had developed of uh, that requires statistics yes. to be accumulated. So I, I was just wondering, I mean, it seems like it should be maybe not such an issue to update the statistics slowly if the, even if you're adding documents, probably the overall term statistics don't change that quickly. I, I don't know in, in general, but. Um, I mean, certainly in the, my experience in the indexes that we work with is that we have a very large corpus, you know, millions of documents, and it's mm -hmm. slowly we're adding every day more documents, you know. But it, I don't think, in for the most part, you might have some new terms that appear, right? But other than that, I, the overall statistics is probably pretty stable. Yeah, I, I would agree with you with for those very frequent, for those high numbers. So this high frequency, yeah. so the small, the slow one, the yeah. low one are very unstable. Yeah, that's true. If you true. have one document, then you get one another. I mean, that's a duplication. It's double as much. So that has a, there you have getting lots of influence. Um, well, at the moment, it's implemented in the, in a way that you, well, you're just getting exactly your same results. Once we are making their, um, um, yeah, we're assuming something and having heuristics, then you might exclude some documents. Uh, so it might, if you, but it's a good idea. We, my, my, one might uh, think to to um, only re since since we are anyway only want to exclude the very frequent ones. Um, that might be a good suggestion to put in the to to ignore never never exclude the the, the ones with the low uh, term frequencies, the document frequencies. Mm. Mm -hmm. So then, most of the time, you shouldn't exclude any any documents and candidates. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's a good suggestion. Thanks. Hi, I, I have two questions. Uh, sure. Are you familiar with the weekend uh, query processing paper? Yes. Um, is it the same as Max Score, or is it a different? Uh, uh, it's very related to Max Score. So, what weekend? <laughs> <laughs> so the difference. So if you read both papers, it's, it's, it's not really clear. Um, the main difference is in the implementation that they are suggesting in, in the weekend one. Um, if I go back to this slide. Um, so, so Mexico just sorts those clauses once before query processing. Uh, in weekend, they're doing that continuously all the time. And by doing that, you are having actually a bit more sorting overhead, but you could get um, uh, independent of the distributions inside of the posting list. Yeah, in, in, in weekend, so you... it's clear that it's actually overall faster. Yeah, we, um, uh, we wanted to... Uh, you developed it, right? Or someone in your... Yeah. Um, so it's not in Lucene, but um, 
I, I think it should be, but um, uh, the, the the idea is that you just decide yeah. that at some point some terms are not going to contribute more to the score, so you move to yeah. a to an end mode. Uh, yeah. Okay, but I just I was just wondering if it's the same. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's in fact the same same idea, but okay. as I say, it's a bit subtle in, in the difference in the implementation. Okay, and the second question was about uh, mean should match. Perhaps I didn't get it right, but. Um, mm -hmm. If I specify that I would like to uh, get results where at least two out of the five clauses are matching the, right. the document, you said that uh, you just pick one of the terms and uh, you try to uh, end it with any uh, of the other terms. Is there any notion of uh, you might not return all the result set, uh, like you might miss some no, results? No, that is, that is just a more efficient implementation. So so it's not, not as you said, it, we, are, we are just taking M minus one out of the disjunctive mm -hmm. processing. Like in this case for two, we can take out one. And then we are doing just a disjunction over the other ones because okay. because in that case, we always run into the all of the candidates that okay. occur in more than one. Okay. And then we're just advancing over the others. Okay, thanks. And at least in this slide, uh, it, it, <coughs> at least for this query, uh, you see that it, doing that is a generalization of the implementation of the conjunctive scoring, so we're actually having not o no overhead here, at least for this query. Um, the um, to be or not to be thing yeah. is uh, often cited as a reason not to do stop words, mm -hmm. but it seems to me it's quite a special case Sorry. counterexample because it only makes sense as a phrase. So, I mean, searching for be not to and or whatever wouldn't be something that somebody does so it goes into just phrase matching and stuff so my question is okay. what, are there more concrete reasons you want other queries well are there more about, about, my question is are there more concrete reasons to avoid stop wording so what about the query the who with the query what sorry the who you know the band if you if you have the query that's still a phrase well, you, you know that it's a phrase, but if you don't okay. know is this, it, if you, if but you, is that, is that the only it as a phrase query, then you might not not get results, right? Okay, but is that the only, are there any other concrete reasons not to do stop wording, or is that the only reason? Um, well, for, for those kind of queries, you're breaking them, so if you don't care about those queries, sure, do it. Okay. So that's why I said, in general, don't do it. There might be some use cases. You might have some documents where it doesn't hurt you or users that issue queries where it doesn't hurt. But in general, you shouldn't do it. Because there are other ways to, to, to handle, uh, to, to get fast queries. And the only so then the only thing that you gain is really this 10% more uh, index size. Andre. I know of a use case that uh, uh, requires indexing stop words, uh, or actually something similar to stop words. Uh, it's a uh, it's a code search engine, so uh, it uh, indexes uh, snippets of code uh, in different languages, and then uh, common constructs like, uh, for example, parentheses uh, or uh, plus uh, or i plus uh, plus, for example. These are very common uh, terms in the index, uh, but still you will, you will want to have uh, you know. Uh, you will want to match them uh, in the queries. So that's an example of an index uh, and a search application that uh, requires high frequency uh, terms uh, to be retained in the index, which is basically what stop words are, uh, high frequency terms. Uh, but actually, Just to, to answer, uh, and, and even if you consider it as a phrase query, you still have to index this because to answer this phrase query, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually have a question uh, to you. Uh, um, have you done any experiments uh, where you would um, uh, change the granularity of posting information? Uh, for example, uh, if you want to have a per sentence granularity of postings, like uh, you're not interested in the exact position of, uh, of a term in a document, uh, but uh, rather you're interested whether it's in sentence uh, one or two, and whether these two terms uh, fall into the same sentence. So that's some intermediate between ignoring positions? Exactly, exactly. Ignoring or, the, 
yeah, uh, making them more cor coarse grained. So I didn't do that myself, but but the usual thing that what people do is it would is would would be just to index then passages or the sentences as documents. So not considering the whole what you think conceptual of a document, but indexing parts of the document as Lucene documents. Well, but then you would uh, you would not uh, have you. It would be more difficult to to get matches on the same uh, you know logic logical complete documents, right? Because okay. uh, so the sentences, it, yeah. So then do that index with passages as well as the whole document. Yes. Then you're having two different types of documents that have different statistical. Yeah, index. but the, but the original yeah, idea was uh, to save on the on the space uh, on the posting lists uh, so that. Uh, you, to find an intermediate, uh, some middle ground between no postings and uh, full postings. Positions. Um, positions, yes. Okay. Yeah. Positions. Um, well, what you can do it for speeding up phrase queries is using this kind of next word indexes where you're indexing uh, consecutive terms as Lucene terms. Uh, that would help you to find. Uh, 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 matches that where, where query terms occur next to each other. If, so if, if you could extend that, if you have quite short sentences um, to, to just index all combinations of them, that would be quite a significant index increase, but... Right. But that's... That's possible. That's possible. <laughs> okay, that's thanks. Any other questions? Thank you again.